same hole. Bullseye. Can't tell where it went. Might be bullseye, I can't tell. Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today we're going to talk about this True Glow Red Dot. And you've seen this red dot on several of the rifles that we've shown on the channel. And lately we've gotten a lot of questions about it, uh, mainly because it's relatively inexpensive and it's quite good for what you, what you pay for it. This is the True Glow Dual Color Multi Reticle. And what that all means is it has two colors for the reticles, red and green. And it has four reticles built in. So, and five brightness levels, which are all adjustable with this knob over here. Use this knob to adjust not only the brightness levels, but the colors. So you can see that some of the numbers are red on the top and green on the bottom. And as you rotate this, it will turn on to the various brightness levels. And see, you can see the reticle and it will uh, determine the color. <clears throat> this lever here at the front allows you to choose between the four reticles. And what it's got is it's got two dot reticles, a 2.5 MOA and a 5 MOA, and it's got two bullseye style reticles, a 2.5 dot with a 20 MOA circle and a 5 MOA dot with a 45 MOA circle. You can see, tilt it up a little bit, you can see the difference. You can just move this lever to choose the various reticles that you want to have. It does come with a Picatinny mount. So basically it comes just like you see it. And I've seen these on Amazon as low as $65. They tend to go right around the $70 range. They do have windage and elevation adjustments and it requires a wrench, but the wrench comes with it. So there's the elevation right, right in there. They are, they have a very large viewing window. <clears throat> it's 24 by 34 millimeters. So when this is on a gun, it gives you a, a very large window to get into. And by the way, you're probably noticing the reticle doesn't look too good. One of the things I've found that kind of shows just how amazing the human eye is compared to even the best cameras, it's exceptionally difficult to take a picture of these reticles. And you'll see I've got some uh, video segments that I'll have at the end of the discussion here that show you the different reticles and it was a real trick to figure out a way to get a camera to actually take a picture of the reticle. And I will tell you that the reticles are far clearer and sharper for real when you're looking at them with your eye than anything you're going to see on the video. So the video kind of gives you a rough idea of what the reticles look like, but they're very crisp and very clear for real, and they're going to kind of look a little bit flared. Cameras just don't seem to like to take a picture of an optic with a holographic image on it. <clears throat> Overall, it's, it's a great little red dot. It works well. They've been reliable. They hold their zero. Um, as mentioned, they're inexpensive. A few of the things about them is they are a closed frame, which makes them a little bit more durable, but they're also a little more bulky. This thing weighs about six ounces. And, you know, one of the things you might be thinking is, okay, well, you know, why would I bother buying a Burris or, you know, a Vortex or an EOTech, you know, for five or six hundred dollars when I can get this? Well, there are a few compromises. This makes a few compromises to, to do that. One is it is a little bulkier. Some of those are a lot lighter, and you also can get the ones with the, you know, the open ones are just a stand-up frame, but they're a little more delicate. Some of the compromises they've made as far as like the anti-glare coating isn't quite as good on this as it is on some of the higher-end ones. And the reticle adjustment, I have not noticed any a point of aim shift when it's switching between radicals. But it is just a mechanical filter that goes in front of a, a laser LED. So the potential exists if you don't get this perfectly centered. So if you're concerned about that, then what you would want to do is pick a particular radical, zero with that radical, and then just stick with it. If you change radical, re-zero. But I have changed radicals without any kind of shift. They advertise this as parallax free at 30 yards. And basically what parallax means is you want the dot dead perfect center in the frame. And on a scope, even a slight deviation from center, like if you don't get a perfect cheek, cheek weld on a scope, that will throw off your point of aim. On the red dot, pretty much the center two-thirds of the window, if the dot's anywhere in the center two-thirds of the window, it's going to be pretty close to dead on. And past 30 yards, anywhere in that center two-thirds of the window, so you know anywhere like in here, it will be dead on. 
some of the higher end ones like the Burroughs and, and a few of those that parallax free point comes in a little bit shorter. So if you're looking for it to be extremely serious, you're looking to go 50, 100 yards and things like that, then you know that's a point you might want to step up. My eyes aren't that good. I can't use a red dot, even the best red dot, at past, much past 30 yards. So I'm pretty much going to use it this within its capabilities anyway. So it's definitely worth considering if you're wanting something fun at the range. Um, I have actually used this hunting. I took a hog with this red dot, and this one that's here on the table mounted on a Tavor. So they are actually very capable and very functional. And well worth it if you're looking for an inexpensive red dot to have some fun with a rifle. And you know, you're not planning on taking it into you know, 50, 100 yard shots where you might benefit from some of the uh, higher end ones. So hang on after the video, we've got, I'll show you the various different reticles. And you can see from the range footage that we put at the beginning, that was just me with my eyes at 25 yards. These have no magnification. And just basically standing with the tripod out or the bipod out and was able to pull a group that tight. If you've got better eyes, you can actually pull one hole inside the other with this one. So. Hang on for some information on the reticles, and after that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, and have a great day. Thank you. This reticle is the 5 MOA center dot with a 45 MOA outer ring. It's basically a bullseye. This is the 5 MOA inner dot with a 45 MOA outer ring forming a bullseye in red. This is the 2.5 MOA inner dot with the 20 MOA outer dot in green. And it looks a little bit flared right now. It's almost impossible to get really good pictures with a camera taking a picture through a scope or through the red dot and taking a picture of something that's lit. This is the 2.5 MOA inner dot with a 20 MOA outer ring. And this one's the red version, and I've moved it off the bullseye because with a red bullseye it's almost impossible to see it in this picture. Though in reality, if you were actually at the range, you could actually see it quite well. This is the 5 MOA single dot, and it's actually quite a bit finer when you look at it yourself with your own eye. Cameras have a tendency to want to flare things a little bit, but this is actually a very fine dot. This is the 5 MOA dot in red which also, like the green one, tends to flare a little bit trying to take a picture of it with this camera. And the 2.5 MOA dot in green, which is also e quite easy to see and works quite well. One of the things I notice is sometimes the green one actually seems to be a little bit more refined and defined and easier to see, unless you're against a green background like grass or something like that, then usually you want to go to red. This is the 2.5 MOA red dot, which, e when you're looking at it with your own eye, is ultra ultra tiny and even at long ranges doesn't cover the target so bad that you can't you know, actually pick a real close point of aim. I had zoomed in on some of the other shots to actually do a better job of showing the dot itself but zooming out to give a picture would be a little closer to what your eye would actually receive looking through it and I'm kind of moving the dot around a little bit and you can see that it's actually a, you know a quite defined easy to see dot but the, with the smallest one especially, it doesn't cover the target so bad that you could actually really find a good spot and get a decent tight group. Using the green one as an example, I'm going to show you the multiple brightness levels. And note that it does have a tendency to appear to flare. The camera tends to make it worse. So there's the standard brightness. Next one up. Next one up. Next one up. And then the brightest one, which, you know, in broad daylight. And then you've got off. And then you can get the same settings in the red, all the way up to the brightest one, and then off. And it is normal for it to appear to flare a little bit, and actually one of the things you can do if you've got a red dot is pick one with a smaller MOA. And if you ever find yourself in a situation of needing the bigger one, turn the brightness up, it'll cause the dot to actually flare, and that flared dot will appear to be bigger. So you. You, you can always make a dot on a small MOA red dot bigger by flaring, but you can't make a large MOA dot smaller in the cases where you get into some distance and the dot you know, would have a tendency to cover the whole target.